Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live webinar with FXDD. My name is Chris from Elite Currency, and we're going to take a look at the live markets, of course, together in, uh, in this live webinar. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, your dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, uh, some major crosses, of course, but also some other instruments, uh, stock indices, cryptos, gold, of course. And if you have anything uh, to ask or if you have any particular currency pair in mind that you would like to take a look at, feel free to use the chat here in the live webinar and uh, reach out with any question that uh, pops up in your mind. Just to feel free to use that. If you are looking later on uh, to the recording on YouTube, uh, then uh, realize that there are live webinar uh, going on with FXDD. I will share the link in just a second and you can join there live as well. First of all, though, we got to walk and talk through uh, this risk disclaimer. It explains the fact that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. All right, so here are those links. Oh, there we go. Uh, so if you want to join live, you can do that this way. If you are live in the in this uh, webinar, also keep in mind that FXDD has a YouTube channel where more uh, videos and webinars are added that you might have missed. So you, if you subscribe there, uh, you'll get updates when those are being added. All right, so good. Uh, Thursday, uh, 6th of June, we got the uh, US session in front of us. We got NFP tomorrow. So it might be a little bit of a, a volatile uh, moment where we have this webinar in this might be, um, seeing some pause slowly but surely eventually tomorrow before the nfp event uh, but for the moment not at the very moment not right now though euro dollar is moving up a lot pound dollar is moving up a lot way more than i expected let's take a look at the markets and let's grab uh, these charts all right so let's close this and let's open mt4 there we go All right, so way, way more uh, impulsive price action than I expected to the upside. And uh, that surprised me because I had turned from bullish to bearish based on yesterday's bearish daily candle, which was uh, quite significant, quite big wick, quite good close near the low. And uh, I was expecting a retracement and continuation lower unless price closes above 113.25. So if we get a daily candle close above that, near the high, that would change perspectives. And based on today's intraday movement so far, that bullish breakout is, is something that could happen uh, and is, is not something that would be uh, so strange at this moment. So yeah, that uh, is quite a twist of events. I really expected price to make that follow through to the downside. From my point of view, it completed A, B, C. That is what we expected. That happened. We got the bounce here. We got a bounce here. Exactly moved as planned. But uh, yeah, this continuation higher is, is really catching me by surprise, a little bit by surprise, because I personally, what I was waiting for was a bearish kind of candlestick pattern up around 112.75. Now, obviously, we didn't get any bearish price action. So I didn't enter, uh, but uh, I didn't enter to the upside either. So just neutral at this point. And uh, waiting for more information at this moment. I personally, this is a huge candle, a big volatile candle. So something sparked the euro dollar. I'm not sure if that was any news related to the venue. But uh, yeah, that basically uh, was... Um, uh, quite a push up for the euro dollar, specifically with the low volatile period of time that we're in. All right. I'm not sure if anyone is uh, looking at the news at this moment, if they have any more information, but yeah, that uh, was a, was a, was a strong bounce. So for the moment, I don't see any trades. I wouldn't want to trade it to the upside. It's too close to 113.25. I, uh, the only thing I'm looking for is a daily candle close above 113.25. If for whatever reason today or tomorrow, there's still another bearish candle. That would be even a strong, that would be even stronger signal. Because if you get two bearish candles like that, maybe not back to back, but within um, three days, then uh, you know if there's another big wick at the top, 
that would indicate a bearish rejection and we would expect price to follow through to the downside so from my point of view only thing to look at is the daily candles today and tomorrow and just wait for information on that if you like trading news events nfp is one of the biggest ones but it's risky because there's a lot of volatility so you know just be aware of that uh, I, i'm going to keep an eye on the daily charts pound dollar i also expect a downside but so far this looks like we're getting a little bit more retracement this four hour candle is also pretty strong not as strong uh, but um, a little bit of a wick but ultimately bullish and seems like price will rather maybe make one move up to hit that 144 you may hit the 38.2 fib and i think that would be a bouncing spot so from my perspective i would be interested in shorting it at 132 i sorry 127.75 Probably with a stop loss at 128.30 uh, is something I would think about. Another way could be to look for bearish candlestick pattern at uh, at the, at this 127.75 and put the stop loss above the candlestick pattern. Target is 125, round level, psychological level. Those are two ways of trading it. A third one could be not trading at the 38.2 fib but waiting for the break below the 21 EMA low. That would require a little bit more patience because price would have to move up, bounce, and then break below the 21 EMA. That would be another option. Um, for the moment, I think it's pretty likely that price is going to tag that 38.2 fib just based on that four-hour candle we saw now, that bullish candle. Okay. Earlier this morning, I was leaning towards the same like the uh, euro dollar. I was leaning towards the, a retracement up into 127.10 ish here, up in this zone, head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. But things aren't always that perfect. Now, on early chart, I have to say that that's a pretty big wick. So who knows? Maybe the pound dollar will reverse. But from my perspective, it would have to break through this support trend line at the very least. And break below the 21 email lay, 21 email low before I would trade it to the downside. I would not trade at one hour candle because four hour candle is bullish. So they're contradictory to each other. So either price tags the 38 or it breaks. I'll be waiting for that. I'm not going to trade it to the upside, nor I'm going to trade it to the downside unless it moves up higher or moves down lower. That's that's it from my perspective. Now, between you and me, uh I would love it if price went up first, personally. Because if it went up first, it would tag the 144 EMA. There would be way more space for a bigger move down. Uh, let me add the WIS tool. Ah, oh, hang on. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't want to delay things, but... I have too many indicators. Now I forgot the... I saw it just a second ago. Yeah, here it is. Alrighty. So we have with six there, 124.22. If we bounce off that uh, with four here, that's a big space, about 370. So that is uh, 55.89, 144 to with five. Yeah. So tons of space there to 125, maybe even 124.25. Uh, so that would be great. So from my perspective, pound dollar, very interesting. Um, could be very interesting in the near future. All right, dollar yen, um, not interesting at this point in my view. Very strong downtrend. Everything is aligned. You got all the moving averages aligned here, and I think it's it's pretty strong trend. But I think that uh, move down has finished and has completed. And I think some kind of correction higher is likely at this moment. So 
I, I just don't see a trend continuation at this spot at this moment. I think that there's the probability of some bigger retracement, maybe to the 50 fib, is is too likely. Now, I wouldn't want to trade the retracement myself. You know, their seekers might want to trade a break above uh, 108.30 in the 21 EMA for that move up to 108.75, perhaps. Uh, 108.50, maybe even higher, maybe even uh, 109, but uh, not in in my view. Um, too risky in my view. And uh, but too risky to the downside as well. I would rather have a retracement first and then a bounce to the downside. All right. Pound yen is making that bounce. 38.2 fib at the weekly pivot point and uh, re finding rejection there as, uh, as, as we thought. And uh, it is moving a little bit lower, moved back up again. So it, it's kind of choppy and corrective going sideways here. Um, this upside is looking a little bit more impulsive, so probably better to wait for the 50 fib. Ultimately, these higher time frames still look bearish because this is a pretty strong candle. These are just small smaller candles on the daily chart weekly chart very clear bearish candle you can't see that too well but very sturdy candles so for the moment i think uh bearish bears are in control but i think uh, probably a pen yeah a pending order or some rejection at a higher level uh could make sense maybe 138.75 Yeah, it looks like some retracement uh, is about to happen. This is pretty overextended. This is pretty far. You got to keep in mind that price has really moved quite a, you know, a, a, a while, quite a big distance for relatively short period of time. So some retracement uh, is is not strange. So I think if it can break above the weekly pivot point, it, it could make a bigger retracement. Really, the most interesting is. Um, a downtrend continuation but probably the best one is if price uh, makes a retracement to the 144 EMA and then continues that would be the very best to be honest not sure if that's going to happen though with seven is the target 135.50 all right so re-break below the 20 EMA I think is uh is is one way of doing it so re-break below 144 you may bounce off r1 or bounce off the 143 may all of those i think are valid ideas for trading the pound yen down to 135.50 down to the with seven level so pound yen looks interesting pound dollar looks interesting uh euro dollar maybe depending on the daily candles that we've seen that we will see today tomorrow and the weekly candle as well at the end of the week and dollar yen looks the least interesting at this moment. Waiting, expecting a retracement. All right. Next on the list, on the menu, euro yen. And uh, seems to be following uh, euro dollar pretty strongly here. Looks to get some final or, or extra uh, win to the upside here. And uh, I would have been okay with trading the Euro-Yen to the downside. It's a little bit different than the Pound-Yen because of the retracement it had here that went pretty close to the 143 May. So I you know, I would consider that to be uh, a, a decent retracement. And therefore, I, I saw more potential for euro -Yen to fall further. But what I needed to see was a break below the 20 May, and we never got it. We never got a close. Wix here, so we never got a confirmation. But if we would have, I think it would have been interesting. We didn't get it, so still waiting. And with the four hour, the current four hour candle close being so strong, uh, I think that price uh, could aim for the 144 EMA now at this moment. That could be the next uh, retracement target. Now, I'm not a big retracement tra trader, I like trading with the trend, I like to focus on that uh, fully. So you won't see me trade 
you know, you won't see many trades from the 121 EMA back to the 144 EMA, to be honest. I mean, it, you can trade them, and there are plenty of times they work out pretty well. Uh, it's just that I like to to just stick on simple things and and rather trade on, um, yeah, the, the trend setups personally. There's plenty of them. For me, it's enough, and uh, it just less headache. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button by accident there. All right, and some of these counter trend trades, of course, just a bit more risky, a bit more difficult. Uh, sometimes I do take uh, early, like not early reversals, but later reversals. Like for instance, here to the downside could have been possible, um, but this is this is really heavily uh, counter trend, and that's too risky for me. I, I rather um, wait. All right, euro pound. Yeah, and that's a sometimes annoying for traders that they you know want to try or to trade something right there right then but if you get used to it just waiting for setups it's not really a big deal i think um euro pound i'm not training euro pound <laughs> that, uh, that much to be honest i'm not a big fan of the slow the slow moving pair but this was a pretty good rally and uh i think that euro pound should be starting an uptrend based on that now, it could still be in a triangle this could still be wave a b c up for d down for e but for the moment momentum is up and i would be i wouldn't be surprised if it went back to the 144 ema and use that as a bouncing spot for trend continuation so if it gets to the 144 ema anytime soon that could be a good bouncing spot dollar cad uh, nah not interesting to me it's been squeezed between the 144 and 21 i don't see any any space there uh kiwi look bearish like the pound and euro dollar but difficult to say it is quite a strong momentum to the upside at this point here let's put a fib from here to here and you can see really was very close to the minus 61.8 uh 161.8 target there so could be more of a wave three maybe than a wave c now, if that's the case, this could be wave four. And if that's the case, we're expecting one more higher high, and we're expecting a bounce the 21 MA, and we're expecting a bounce, if we put a fib from here to here, at perhaps the 38.2 fib. So that does not look as bearish as I uh, as I thought it would be. All right, so mm, considering the question mark on the, on the um, euro dollar, Considering the bullish candle on the four four hour chart on the pound dollar, um, maybe more likely the key will move up for wave five. So waiting for a bounce at around 66, 66, 10. Price shouldn't break below 65, 75 with target at 67, 12, minus 272 target. Maybe 67 could make sense. Same thing probably for the Aussie. It also seems to be maybe making a wave 3, 4, 5. We got a long to moving average around 70, 50. That could be the target. Let's put a fib from here to here. Oh, hang on. And uh, we got a bounce at the 38.2 fib, 69, 66. That could be it. All right, so let's see. Uh, we could, I mean, price could easily bounce back down, get retest the 50 fib. That would be very interesting if it bounced at the 50 fib, 50 fib and broke above the 21 EMA again. That would really be interesting for me personally if it does that. And target could be 70, 35, 70, 50 in my view. That would create more space. Uh, create a better discount, better retracement, and create more space to the target. So that that would be that would seem interesting. That would be, I think, a, a, an okay setup there for one more swing trade on the Aussie to the upside. Maybe more, but at least one more. 
All right. Your odd didn't get the break of this bear flag. I was looking for a break of the bear flag for one more downside uh, down to the, the 610 uh, moving average at 159.75. We didn't get the break. One of the advantages of waiting for a break rather than trading um, something you think could happen, waiting for a candlestick to confirm what you think might happen, save me from entering at a bad spot at the bottom of a bear flag instead of anticipating the bear flag break, which I didn't. So that's good. Uh, now, in the middle of that bear flag, still waiting for the break to the downside. And well, to be honest, this is not a bad upside candle. So yeah, it, uh, it's the you're odd though. It's, it's a tricky pair, you're odd. Not my, not my favorite. I, I like pound out more typically. Uh, so I'm really not sure about what the odds are of uh, of this breakout working. I mean, price is the moving averages are aligned. You got price breaking above the 21 EMA, but there was a clearly a wick at that trend line. I am um, I am I'm skeptical a little bit. I'm hesitant a little bit. We do see a clear ABC pattern to the downside, but this sideways move is very choppy. I would probably skip upside still for the moment, rather wait. I would probably need to um, see more information before I would trade this to the upside. I think that the downside is still very valid though for the, for the reversal breakout. All right. I don't have any particular ideas on the year in New Zealand, to be honest. So let's skip that. I don't want to, uh, you know, hold you up too much with analysis. I would try to focus on uh, on the uh, instruments that I think are interesting for from a trading perspective. Um, and I don't see that on pound odd, nor pound is in at this moment. Although I like those pairs, but I I just don't see any. Any movement there that I think could be interesting. Let me just add the whiz to pound odd. Uh, let's see. Here we go. All right. Ah. Hang on. All right, there we go. So what do we got? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we had a bounce off with five pretty clearly, as you can see. Likely to retrace, I think, at this moment, the euro odd, in my view. Could go up to WIS 4 or WIS 3 and the log to moving average. I don't see a with the trend continuation uh, set up there on pound odd at the moment. Not at this point. Unless price breaks again below the 20 million May, that could change perspectives, but not now. All right, let's take a look at some non-Forex pairs. How about uh, Bitcoin? It's the first one I bump into. Made a retracement, didn't it? Uh, fell down almost $2,000, I guess. What is the high? Ni over 9000 and the low here, 7400 So, yeah, it's just $1,600 or so, 1650 uh, of a dip. Uh, and um, 1650 Compared to 900 is about 18%. So a fair retracement there. And the weekly candles look quite funny with the three doshis in a row, but all of them still moving up. Um, and uh, well, we had obviously strong momentum. And, and based on that, I would expect price to continue higher. But... 
we're certainly seeing a strong con challenge of the 21 EMA here. Uh, very strong candle. I would be inclined to say that price might make a little bit of a retracement, maybe a deeper retracement. Um, but that's maybe a little bit too early. Uh, it's likely that this is a pullback. It's, it's a fair chance that this is a pullback within the uptrend and the 21 EMA can hold as a bouncing spot for, for one more higher high. Uh, I think it's a fair chance. But if it doesn't continue higher this week, then a larger retracement is becoming uh, more likely though. So the odds are shifting um, if it doesn't happen this week. Yeah, that, that's how I see it at this moment. You got to be careful of the head and shoulders level, of course, potentially here. This one right there, that could be resistance. Personally, I sold some Bitcoin at around uh, 8,600. I have no idea if that necessarily was wise, but it did move a little bit lower from there, so uh, at least something. Uh, but uh, most of it, I'm still holding for long-term um, long targets or long-term developments. Uh, it was just a small, um, maybe, how much was it? Maybe 20, 20%. It's just a, you know, minority part of it. Um, because at that time, yeah, a retracement seemed likely. We had a, a pretty bearish candle. We had a pretty good run up. So some retracement, I don't know, seemed likely. Yeah, let's move on. I, I really am a little bit doubt, hesitant with the p Bitcoin at this moment. I I think it could make one more move up. It could easily make a retracement. So it's I'm not too sure I, I, at this moment. Let me say it this way. Uh, S&P 500 is, my view, going up into resistance. I would expect one more leg down and some bounce at 50, 61.8 fib. Let's see. This is Ethereum. Ethereum. And uh, I had, yeah, I sold a couple of Ethereum as well. I mean, honestly, the it really made a large downside here, way more than Bitcoin. And the price just seemed depressed to me. And I, I just decided that, um, you know, this was at least some recovery. I don't know if this was a beginning of, of an uptrend or a dead cat bounce <laughs> almost because of that huge downside. This is upside seemed really quite minor. So I decided to to close part of a bigger part of my Ethereum trade uh, at this um, not too high level around two two ninety I think no two eight what was it Let me check on the daily chart two uh, only two two sixty five ish but. At least better than uh, than when it was at eighty. Um, so yeah, it does show some momentum. I'm just that weekly chart is is a little bit not that appealing to me. Gold is strong, but there was some wick here, and if my idea is correct, this could be wave B, and we should see one more leg down for wave C. But I don't know. It's uh, it's it's a wick, but it's not a pin bar necessarily. You know, or maybe it is a pin bar, but it's not a great pin bar. It, it has still a bullish close. So I would probably not trade it to the downside yet. It, it's um, neither way at this moment. Waiting either for a breakout or a clear bounce for one more lower low. If price gets to 1250 or 1230, I think that would be a interesting reversal spot for a potential uptrend. All right, uh, DAX, we were looking at the potential for price to hit resistance. No, I'm confused, sorry. Um, we were looking for this fib, sorry.
And it seems like price could go up to the 78.6 fib, perhaps bounced off to 61, but didn't bounce too far. So yeah, one more higher high seemed likely. So far, yesterday was a doji, so we're not getting a break above the 20 May yet. Probably still seems the most likely though that price will still make one more high high. Uh, if it does break below perhaps this trend line, then uh, that would change things, of course. And then we might see uh, an immediate bearish continuation. All right. That's it for, for my perspective. Let's make a recap. If you have any other pairs in mind, let me know. And we take a look at that, okay? Uh, we still have plenty of time if, if you wanted to ask something. But looking at the recap, uh, quick summary. From my perspective, pound, dollar, pound, yen looked the most interesting. The best would be one more you know, slightly larger retracement, but then I think they're really bumping into a bigger resistance and they both look interesting. Your dollar could be interesting, but only after daily candles. Um, Euro yen could be interesting if after the bounce at the 144 you may. And Kiwi and Aussie, to me, would not look bad for one more higher high after this wave four is finished. Your odd reversal could be interesting. To the downside, pound odd could be interesting for downside, but some retracement or sideways move is needed first. And otherwise, this would look, that would look interesting. Uh, I would like that pound odd. That's about it, I guess, for the moment. Otherwise, if I didn't mention the pair, it I didn't uh, you know reach uh, my um, interest enough at this moment. And um, Let's see NFP tomorrow. Be careful with NFP, of course. Big volatility. And looking at the daily candle of an NFP day, it has a lot of value. It uh, often is a you know, big battle in that day, throughout the day. So whatever that daily candle provides, okay, you know, whatever information that we can get from that daily candle, it has a, even more value than a you know a typical daily candle because there's so much participation in the market during the NFP day that whatever that candle information is, it's more valuable than usual. So good to, especially with your dollar, dollar yen, pound dollar, of course. A lot of info we can get about the potential direction uh, in yeah short term, short medium term. All right. Well, I hope that helped and um, wish you all good trading. See you very soon in the next webinars next week with Nenet and myself and, of course, FXDD YouTube channel. You can uh, find out more videos and webinars from Nenet and myself. So see you very soon. Cheers.